For those of us who know and love the game of men's fast pitch softball, the most common topic of conversation is, how do we get more young people involved in this great game? Here at the ISC, we believe that while spreading the word and encouraging more local teams and leagues to form is very important, there's also a big need for resources and instructions to be available for these potential new athletes. With so many youth coming up in the game of baseball, there's a great pool of talent out there. But the most common obstacle we hear about is a lack of pitchers. The ISC would like to begin to produce more quality instructional content to help in this area, to demystify and debunk some common misconceptions about pitching and provide great quality instruction on techniques and fundamentals for upcoming athletes. In this video, stay tuned because we've brought you one of the best pitching instructors out there. Enjoy. Gerald Musler, um, pitching coach with the U.S. national team. Um, been retired from the game as a player for about five years now and uh, transitioned to the coaching side of things. Um, been a good week here trying to get uh, some younger guys interested in pitching, uh, trying to teach them some of the technical skill sets that they need. I think there's interest. Uh, I think that there are a lot of talented athletes, but uh, there's just not a lot of access to, uh, to the technical coaching side of pitching. Uh, so just try to get that exposure and make it available for guys who are interested. Under that first knuckle, you want the ball in the fingertips and then you want it sort of on the thumb. You do not want to get it back deep in your hand. Uh, that's going to be eliminating velocity and it's going to be a lot more difficult to control. The other thing is, depending on your hand size, some people may need to go to three fingers. I'm a big believer, fewer fingers is better. You're going to get better consistency, repeatable spin, repeatable velocity if you have fewer fingers on the ball. So if you can grip it with two, grip it with two. If you need that third, either on the side or on the top, that's fine. Um, but you know, over time, maybe work towards getting two. I don't know if you guys do two fingers or three. Two? Two as well. Perfect. So probably not a big stretch. And I find most guys coming from baseball used to two, so it's not a big difference for them. When working with kids who grow up in softball, sometimes it's a transition because the ball is so big at a young age, it's hard. Uh, but that's good if you're already with two. So again, kind of horseshoe here, fingers here. Some people throw it here, uh, which is fine, um, yeah, but it's really, you gotta get across. The, so when you're releasing it and peeling it, you've got the four seams. So what I wanna do is just start with good drop ball grip, glove by your front thigh, hand back here, and all you're doing is just release the ball. So purpose of this is a few things. One, obviously to get a good grip. The other is to keep your hand close to your body. You don't want to be getting out here. You don't want to be getting your shoulder turn. You, know, you want your arm coming through your body here as opposed to through your body here. So here, just release off your fingertips. I'll just do that like 10 times just so you kind of get used to what does that grip feel like and then release the ball into your glove. So yeah, you don't have to, don't have to be high, just here, here, real easy. And again, it's just that muscle memory of your arm passing in front of your body as opposed to coming out here on the side. So when I say closed versus open, do you guys know what that means? So, nope, um, as far as body position. So, if this is home plate here and that's the pitcher's mound, you're in a closed position. Means basically closed position, draw a line from home plate, through your two feet, through your shoulders, back to second base, that's a closed position. Yeah, this is open. Now when you square up to home plate, that's open position. And what this is trying to teach us is how do you stay in that closed position as your arm comes through. Uh, just about everybody I've ever worked with and myself that I pitched for 30 years, this shoulder wants to fly open. You, you, your body wants to do that but it's really important that we train ourselves how do you keep that shoulder in and you've got more of this motion as opposed to here. Um, so we'll go through a few more reps of that and then we can talk a little bit more about why that's important. And as you release, follow through up to the opposite shoulder. 
So same thing, rolling off your fingers, just nice and gentle, and just follow through to that opposite shoulder. So one motion to here, right to there. Yep, it's not release then up, it's release as you're coming up. Yep. Good. Then from there, after that kind of feels normal, bring your arm up a little higher, still keep your glove down, do the same thing, just five or ten. So stop, get your good grip, arm passes through in that closed position, good release, and then yeah, follow through to that opposite shoulder. Yeah, and with that, you might have to compensate a little bit with your knees and bending at the upper body. So instead of that causing you to open earlier, now you got to get a little more in this position so your arm can pass freely through. And yeah, everybody's going to be built a little bit different. You may have to compensate a little bit, but uh, but absolutely, when you're when you're here, it's probably a little more bending of the knees and just a little bit more bend at the waist. You definitely don't want to be back. You don't want your weight off balance. If anything, you want to be bent a little bit forward so that the center of gravity is a little bit over your feet. Good. And then there's lots of variations and we'll go through just a couple of them, but you know, stuff you can do at home, especially if you're cold weather climate, you don't have a gym to get into. It's just stuff you can do 10, 20, 30 reps each night. But if I can just grab the ball for a second, there we go. Still, here, get in the K position. I don't know if you guys heard K position before, but basically draw a line through that back leg. Both of you, it's your righty. As a lefty, it's coming through your left leg, but it's straight up on this side with your arm and your leg out, it's K position. I'm more concerned about, instead of this leg being straight, I care about it being under your center. So think of hitting. And when you're hitting, your weight is on that back leg. Same thing with pitching. You've got to have your weight on this back leg as you're coming through. If you get here and this leg is dragging behind, you lose all that power from your backside. And now you're throwing a lot more with the arm. So that's why I'm a big believer in getting here, whether it's a straight leg or bent, that you're kind of in this position. So, have you guys ever know, heard the name of Aaron, Darren Zach? So one of the greatest pitchers ever. You even watch some of the you know, videos of him or pictures of him. His back leg, when he's in the air, is almost this direction, almost pointing forward. And I think that was a big reason why he got so much power, because it wasn't dragging behind. It was in a position that, when it hit the ground, it was loaded with a lot of power and ready to you know, drive the ball and drive your arm forward. So do that, get here, arm out K position, come through, follow through to that shoulder. Here, follow through. Again, we'll do it off the drop ball, drop ball grip, drop ball spin. You can do a few like that, then you can even put a little small step into it, but go just stationary for a few, and then do a few where you put a small step in it. That's fine, you can do a few stationary, and then we'll do a few with a step in it. And what you'll feel is you're naturally this hip backside, your hip and leg is gonna wanna a bit of that motion getting into the delivery so which is fine you can get that a little bit of drive from that leg as you come through and again this is the perfect time of year for this kind of stuff because you're not probably in a game situation for another three four months it's all about muscle memory getting the right technique and you don't have to worry about where the ball is going to get hit when you're throwing it so it's stuff you can take home after after this weekend and hopefully work on it for a few months So now, go K, just a little bigger stride, a little more leg. So doing the same thing, and make sure you follow through. So we're, everything we've done to this point, make sure you continue to do that. So it's, it's K, release, follow through, but just a little more leg and a little more step in it. Good. Probably you have a sore hip or a sore elbow when you're throwing. Yeah. It's you're you're here. Your body is trained to want to get to this position as opposed to here, which is allowing your your lower half to do a lot of the work. You're now throwing mostly arm, and you're not getting a lot of power from the bottom half. And a lot of that is shoulder close. Keep that shoulder close. 
I'm never gonna, I don't think I've ever worked with anybody saying your shoulders close too long, like you gotta open up quicker. It just never happens. You, you, the motion makes you wanna open up early, but the longer you can stay closed, the more power you get from the bottom half. Does that feel different than what you're used to? It sounds like for you, it's a little different position coming through. Yeah. Different for you? Yep, yep. Good. Feel free to jump in if you want to, Gwiz. Good, yeah. All right, now what we're gonna do, again, we're not taking a full step. We're just put your arm here, glove out, arm out, come around step and throw into your glove. So now you're getting sort of that full motion. I'm even fine if it's a slight sort of little hesitation at the top. If it's here, it's almost a little bit of a two part, but I want you to be this position, little step, come around. Again, we'll do it off the drop ball, following through to that shoulder. You're, when you're coming through, you're a little bent elbow, a little short arm, try and, and that's fine coming through here. When you come down the backside, you want to be sort of full extension, straighter arm. You don't want to have any much or any bend coming through the bottom half of that delivery. Yeah, yeah, which is probably not a big deal based on what we're trying to just, you know, as far as muscle memory here. more about keeping that front shoulder closed is probably more of what we want to sort of reinforce here. Okay. Yeah, looks looks good. I'm sure it feels a little uncomfortable. Anytime you're changing mechanics, it's going to feel weird and uncomfortable. So we're going to sort of shelf that second half. Now the question is, how do we get to here? Um, and that will sort of break down separately. So you start, you have home plates this direction, you're starting square. I like having my feet as far apart this way, stepping back as far as I can, and you get the most leverage, you get the most power from your legs within reason. I could go here, but now I'm off balance and I'm losing power. So you kind of have to find that spot where you still feel like you have a firm base, someone's not gonna be able to push you over, you've got your balance, you're in position where you can bend your knees and get power. Uh, so for me, it's sort of this distance. Some guys can go back further. Some guys need to be a little closer together, but it's whatever you feel you can, as far back as you can go and still feel like you've got good balance. The second part is the distance, not, not only the distance you step back, but the width of your feet. I like to be sort of shoulder width apart. I like this foot to be sort of left shoulder, this foot to be in line with right shoulder. Some people will be more in this position, sort of a straight line. Uh, and Gwiz, I know you have done this in the past. I don't know if you've adjusted. What happens there, I, some people could be really successful, but what I find is as you stride forward, your leg naturally, instead of going forward, starts to go off to the left. So now you're coming this way, and a lot of people who have that uh, sort of a path sort of here and then back, it's a, in part because they're starting with their leg in a very straight line, and now you're forced to come that direction before you go forward. I like having everything going a little more straight to the plate, and I like to have my legs sort of shoulder width apart, and I think it helps with that. The other thing is when you are here, you naturally keep that shoulder open a little bit more because you're going that direction as opposed to this distance. You now bring it straight, get a little more of that closed position. So this is more preference. I wouldn't say there's a right or a wrong way, but you wanna make sure that you're getting that shoulder closed and you're getting everything going to the plate. So you'll have to find that width that makes sense for you. Make, make some sense? Gwiz, you went through that kind of, have you adjusted or? So I, I noticed that with myself. And then, so you noticed it, pointed it out to me, but then uh, when I was looking at some other people that I was working with and trying to uh, throw some bullpen sessions, you see a lot of it twisting off the, off the rubber and op opening immediately here. Yep. Yep, that shoulder is staying open. Yep. So it has helped a lot to, to get wider. Yep, perfect. Okay, so what we'll do is just get in your stance. And that's all we're going to do is we're just going to get here and we're going to start with our weight back and then sort of lean forward and get your weight shifted to the front leg. So that's all I want you to do. Like, 
If your regular is a straight line, I want you to widen it a little. If your regular is a little bit wide, I'm fine with that. I don't, I don't think you have to get too wide, but if you're a straight line, I'd encourage you to widen it a little bit. But all I'm asking is, so here, get grip, sort of take your sign, get your weight on that back leg, and then transfer to the front. So that's our first drill, pretty simple. It's just here, here. All right, and what you're doing is you're transferring weight from back leg over top of that front leg. When you get to here, you should almost be able to lift that leg off the ground. Everything should be completely square and centered on this. Using your upper body to start to get that momentum, bending your leg so it's loaded and ready to explode. So here, here. Don't jump yet. <laughs> You're ahead of things. I'd widen it a touch. Yep. Yep. I think that's good. You're looks like you're trying to find the distance and that. Yep. 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 And again, it's everybody's body type and build the motions are a little bit different. I'm, I like stretching yourself, but if you can't have that heel on the ground and you can't get your weight resting on that back leg, you're probably going back too far. But if you're not stretching yourself at all, you're probably not going far enough, so. Yep. Sure. And, that, and that's fine. And you really ultimately, you're getting to the same place. It's whether you start back and step forward, or I like to generally be up on that front leg, taking signs, and then coming back to my set position. Uh, some people like to be here, be back when they're taking their signs. I don't think there's a right or wrong. I even say being back here, taking your signs is probably by letter of the pitching law, which is more legal. Yeah. Yep, because in ISF anyway, I don't think ISC is quite as stringent. ISF, you're not allowed to transfer your weight back once you take your signs. So you have, if you're here and come back, that's an illegal pitch by ISF rule. I wouldn't worry too much about it, but I think this is a little more legally correct where your where your weight back over that back leg when you take your signs and get your grip. But you definitely can't step. You can't move that back foot back. Um, so it's here, and then boom, just getting yourself loaded over that front leg. Try and take your stepping foot and move it to, yep, so not back quite as far and out that direction. And instead of being on an angle like this, try and keep it straight. So both feet are pointing towards home plate. Okay. See where your heel is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Because what, what's going to happen is, if you think of sprinters in the starting blocks, their feet are like this, they're in this position, and they're pushing off it's sort of that straight and if you're on the side what's naturally going to happen is i don't think you get the same level of push so that's where i'm a big fan of keeping them as straight as you can especially that back one okay your foot's naturally coming up yours not as much uh, it's okay but don't get into this habit that to me is one of the few things with when it comes to legal pitches is that front foot rocking and coming out of contact with the rubber that will get called um, so I would say that's just something ingrained is you're okay to rock and even lift I wouldn't lift real high and I definitely wouldn't break contact okay so now the question is how do you get from here to here and some people come relatively natural and easy but think of, you're pushing off as hard as you can and you have to rotate this foot 90 degrees as you do it. So everything for me, as far as getting from this open square position to closed position, all comes with this push foot. And as you push, you need to rotate. Some guys you'll see will actually even almost go heel up and then start to rotate as they come through. Others are pretty square and as you push off, rotate but it all comes down to this foot being able to rotate as you push without losing any of that drive from your legs. So what I want you to do is start back here and then just do that. So we're not, we're not driving, we're not arm motion, it's just 
here, weight on the back leg, transfer to the front, push and rotate that foot. So kind of getting with that foot rotated up to the K position. Good. And actually let's do it first, we'll do it with a push or a hop. If initially, let's do it where this foot doesn't leave the ground and doesn't drag. So just, all you're doing is that. With your foot, when you're coming, you're not rotating a lot. You're kind of getting up on your toe. Not bad, I'd like a little more rotation because that rotation is gonna cause your hips to turn and get you closed more. So again, no drag, just from here up to the K. So Gwiz, you're kind of battling what we talked about earlier, which is you want to go forward so hard that back leg's getting caught behind. So it's right here. When you get to that finishing spot, I mean, you should almost be where you can tap that front foot and all that weight should be loaded on your back leg still. And if you get too much on that front leg, you're losing a lot of power. So here, okay, again, try and tap once you get there, just to reinforce that that weight is on your back leg. Now, you watch all the pictures. Some are here, some have a big loop, some come back here. There's lots of things you can do, but really the purpose of your arms is just to allow the timing of your arms and legs to meet up. So for me, I always had a big loop because I wanted to allow my lower half to do more work and drive to here. If I would just come right away, my arm would be way ahead of my legs and I wouldn't get as much. So that's why I like to get a little extra, just a loop in here. Again, there's no right or wrong, but if you feel like you're not getting loaded enough, you probably want to do something to slow your arm down a little bit for the first part of your motion. So let's just do five more or so where you're not driving, you're just getting up on that front or on that back foot. Boom. So here, set, load, up. Yeah, that's good. You're feeling it though. You're recognizing like, that's what you need in order to fix it is recognizing that difference. Okay, one more. All right, now I'm I'm a hopper. I like to hop, so I'm gonna do this as hopping. If you're one that stays more on the ground or drags, that's fine too. But let's do the same drill. But we're we're now getting out here. We're now driving and getting out to that K position. We're not doing the full motion. We're again, we're set. We get the weight over your back leg. You're leaning forward, you're loading up this leg. We push, rotate the right leg, left leg for a lefty, and we're getting to that K position, but this time we're pushing off of the rubber and we're we're not we're not concerned about going as far as we can towards the plate. It's got to be up and out because if you push too far, what's going to happen is this leg gets left behind, right? If you push too far, this leg gets left behind. You want to get to that same spot where, boom, you're stacked. The power or your weight is over top of that left back leg, just like, just like hitting, right? Everything's loaded on that back leg. Same thing with your pitching motion. It's loaded over that back leg and we're able to follow through. So again, not the full motion, just get set weight back boom much better that's all right I won't kick you out if you go all the way through but the whole idea is you want to get here and give yourself a little bit of a self check to say am I getting to the right spot your your back legs lagging behind a little bit you're gonna to wanna to try and get a little more here so it doesn't lag behind. Better, yep. How's that feel? What's that? It's 
probably not a bad thing, right? I mean, that's what we're here for is to, to say, all right, where are the things that we do well? What are the things that, aren't, you know, that need to be changed? And if you're changing, it's gonna feel awkward. You're probably gonna feel like it's slower and harder. So, okay. Good, let's do a few more of those. Good. Now, you can be here, you can be here, you can be here. Like there's no right or wrong. Uh, I mean, extremes, Todd Martin, he was here. He was right over his head, ball in glove right over his head. Um, Devo, uh, he was he was here, like he hesitated down here. So he was a ball and glove to here and then he'd come around. So again, this is gonna be a little more personal preference, uh, but you're probably gonna have some sort of a hesitation. You're gonna have that ball in glove and you're gonna get somewhere around here. Not as concerned about the arm position as I am the weight and power over that back leg. Good, it's looking pretty good. Looks pretty different for you, Wiz. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but it, no, it looks good. It's a good different. Good. All right, now before we try and connect the two pieces, which is going from here to K and now K and follow through, we've got sort of both, is this is gonna be my own personal style, I guess, or what worked well for me. This is not, doesn't work for everyone, didn't work for everyone. I played basketball, played college basketball, and I was ingrained at a young age. When you jump, you do your layup, it's drive that knee, right? You're, you're coming here. Same thing with pitching, I always, drove my left knee so a lot of guys are sort of straight on the front end coming through like this i was look at any picture of me or video i'm like this got made fun of a lot of times look like it was a, what they call it, the crane kick or whatever karate kid you know so they had me like this a lot of times in my motion because i had that bent leg but i really tried to take that knee and drive that knee which gave me power going forward so in this same drill just play around with that knee some people, they don't like to bend it a lot. Some people might bend it a lot. You're gonna find what works for you. But I think that that's a great trigger to help you drive and get more out of your legs is driving that left leg and driving that knee. So you can try it, see if it works for you. Good. All of you are doing a good job of keeping that leg stacked and making sure you're in a good powerful position when you get to K, so that's good. Um, I'm gonna pause before we sort of connect the dots and go through the whole motion. Questions from either of you? No? Okay. Yeah. Now, and, and like I said, I, I pitched for 30 some years and that when I started to get tired, the shoulder would fly open when, um, you know, sometimes just mechanics would start to go. I'd start to lose pitches, sort of in on righties, away from lefties, because that shoulder would fly open and I was getting to this position instead of here. So it's it's not gonna be an easy fix. I don't wanna make it sound like it's something you can fix overnight, but you've gotta be aware of it. Yep, yep. So something you can do is the drills we were talking about, if you want some instant feedback, go up against a wall. So you get that wall in front of you and you're now here. And if you open up early, your knuckles are gonna scrape against the wall. If you're in a good position, everything should flow through nicely. But if you start getting here and your arms out to the side, you'll start scraping up against the wall. So if you want some instant feedback, that's another way to do it. Somewhat, yep, yep. So, uh, Chain link works even better if you want even more of uh, instant feedback, but uh, um, all right, perfect. Other questions? All right, so with that, let's just sort of do dry again. We'll try and connect the whole thing. We get here, 
here, I want you to almost pause for a second and then follow through. So it's gonna be really sort of awkward and deliver it, almost stop, but that's gonna force you to get that weight on the back leg. And then, so we're here, boom, boom. And then after that, we'll take that hesitation out and we'll go through a full, I want you to pause almost like a one Mississippi, stop, follow through. Good. 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 Okay. All right, now let's, same thing. You don't have to stop quite as long, make it a little more of a nat natural motion, but I still want you to think, get that K position. Get close, get the K, follow through, but you don't have to stop like we were before follow through but making sure you're getting that shoulder closed and getting to the K. Okay. Good. You're you're drifting a lot, Jordan, this direction. So again, now I'm drifting, where are my feet, where are my position? Try and have a little more of a straight line. Um, so it's not as much upper body as it is, where's that back leg? Are they shoulder width apart? As you come through, are you coming and turning the foot to get the shoulder closed? So if you're drifting, those are the two things I'd key on is starting position, rotating that foot as you get to K. Yep, that's better. Don't get frustrated, you're fine. It's gonna be awkward, like, I mean, just accept the fact it's gonna be awkward when you start working on this stuff. So don't feel like you wanna regress and go backwards just to make it feel comfortable. You're, you're really lifting that back leg and almost bending the knee. I think you wanna more of that, like instead of jumping so high, you almost maybe keep it a little lower to the ground. And then when, instead of getting up so high, you load to this position a little more, but like, don't feel like you have to jump over a chair with that back leg. Feel like you're, and you're probably over exaggerating just to get that muscle memory. Yep. Yep. So two things on your start, sit a little more, put that weight over your back leg a little more, bend this back knee a little bit, and as you come forward, get your chest to knee and bend that front knee a little bit. So you're getting a little more weight transfer. Yep. Good. Yeah, looking good. Okay, all right, I'm just gonna pause there before I move on to a couple of other like more pitch specific stuff. Uh, so just bring it in a little bit. Any any questions with, with what we covered there? Making, making some sense? Yeah. And I want you to understand the why behind it as much as just the how, right? Because it's like, do this, and well, if you don't know why I'm doing it, sometimes it's hard to reinforce. So, um, and it, hopefully you can also self-coach a little bit as you're going through and it's like, oh, I'm losing the ball on the side of the plate. All right, let's take a step back. How are my feet positioned? How am I getting that shoulder closed? Am I getting to the good position here? Like that's gonna be really helpful for you to self-coach a little bit. Because most teams don't have pitching coaches. You know, most guys maybe have one or two, maybe a teammate that knows what's going on. So you can help them to help look out for things, but you probably don't have coaches that are proactively looking at your mechanics and trying to teach you. So you're gonna have to self-coach a little bit. Um, like I said, I can share my contact information and you know, share videos or whatever, more than happy to look at stuff and provide feedback throughout the year. As you put some work in and start to feel like the mechanics are getting better, happy to sort of uh, look at it as well. All right, if you guys don't have any questions on that, I'll just, I'm gonna show you my three pitches, uh, grip and maybe slight variations of the mechanics to be able to, uh, to throw each of those pitches. So again, drop ball, 
that's sort of key grip. Um, as you're coming through, there is, you know, some people throw a peel drop where they're sort of rolling over the top, or uh, sorry, uh, like roll over. I'm a big fan of the more what they, most people call traditionally a peel drop. Coming through here and you're coming straight behind the ball, following through to this shoulder, right? Whole idea is how to get those four seams tumbling. Um, so I think we sort of covered that already. What we haven't covered as much as how, how do you get there um, or how do you get to a good spot where your body weight is over top your leg. Um, so what I always would do is when I'm landing, I'm thinking drop ball. If my normal landing position is here, I want to land three, four inches short. What that's going to do is as you land, your upper body is going to have a tendency to get weight over top of that leg. The back shoulder have a tendency to be up a little higher. So you're here and you're sort of in this position now where you're getting on top of that ball, being able to give it the downward spin. So here, stop short, get over the top. And instead of this is your natural motion, it's right, or I should say follow it through here. So you want to get over top of that leg. A lot of people try and do arm stuff with it. My big thing is just stop that foot three, four, five inches short. That'll bring your momentum up over top of that leg. Make sense? Um, same thing for the changeup. You want to stop that short and get over top. The only difference for me with my changeup is two slight differences between a drop ball and a changeup. Here's my drop ball grip. Here's my changeup grip. So um, if you want to come in a little, you can see it. Uh, not palming it, exactly. It's you, nothing in the palm. I'm getting a little bit of grip of their stabilization with that finger and with the thumb, but it's almost all in the tips of these two fingers. If you palm it, you're going to start throwing it up at lefty's heads. It's going to be really difficult to control release. Um, and I think you throw it harder. This way, it's almost impossible to throw this hard. Um, so that's the slight difference. You got drop, change. Same motion with one slight variation. When you get here, drop, you're sort of peeling up the back, change up, you're just slight twist of the hand right at release. So instead of peeling off of these fingers, I'm just having these fingers go over and releasing slightly out of the back. So um, again, since you guys are playing right now, I'm not gonna have you throw change ups and stuff. Um, but if you wanna, as you're warming up, if you wanna work on it, if you wanna, after you're done the tournament, you want me to look at it, but do not, do not, do not slow your arm down. Try and snap that pitch off. Like, and it may go in the lake the first few times and that's fine, right? You just want to get here and you want to have the same motion. You're throwing it hard. You're just stopping that stride a little bit short, getting over the top and you're rotating just a little rotation of the hand as you're coming through. Now, again, this is my changeup. There, I shouldn't say mine, I didn't invent it. It's the way I threw my changeup. There are probably a hundred different variations of changeups. Um, probably one of the favorite things for guys who played this game 50 years ago is to come up to you and talk about change-ups and how they threw their circle and, and some of them are good some of them work uh, I just find one that works for you and get committed to it and really establish first a drop ball hard at the knees and then an off-speed pitch that goes down at the knees off of your drop ball if you can do those two things you're gonna do pretty well in this game now probably not going to get where you want to get to. It's not going to get you to the top level. You're not going to win an ISC or, you know, an ISF World Championship doing that, but that's going to give you a really good foundation, especially for yourself where you're starting out only pitch for a year. I'd be super focused on those two pitches. Uh, once you get those to a pretty good place, then I would move to a rise ball. And rise ball, um, again, there's different thoughts and variations of how people grip it. I'll show you how I grip mine. And that was, again, on the horseshoe, I get this middle finger on the bottom of the horseshoe. I get this bottom finger just above that seam. And as I'm here, I'm taking that finger not straight up, but to the side. And then, yeah, then as I'm coming through, well, we'll get to when I'm coming through in a second here. But that's, that's the grip on the ball. Uh, anybody remember Paul Algar? Uh, if you haven't heard of him. One of the better rise ball pitchers that I ever remember playing against, especially sort of late 90s, early 2000s. You're playing, Paul, you knew you were going to get 95% rise balls. It's going to come at you 80, 85 miles an hour with a rise ball and hit it. You know, like he wasn't real finesse, but he had just a tremendous rise ball. And I can't do it. My fingers aren't flexible enough. He was like this. 
his finger was basically sideways on the ball like this. Um, and it was really effective for him. And if you have flexible fingers and can do that, I'd encourage you to kind of go to the side as much as possible. I would encourage you not to be straight up and down. Try and get it to the side at least a little bit. I'm not that flexible through my fingers, so I was a little bit more of like a 45. Um, but, you know, if you can get even further, get even further. Uh, but it has to be somewhat natural. If you, if you have to crank your fingers to get the grip, you're probably probably not the, the you know, uh, the grip for you. But, um, yeah, so questions on that? Okay. And as far as coming through, it, it is quite different than the drop ball. So drop ball, we're here, we're stopping short, we're getting our weight over the front leg, front shoulder's coming up. Rise ball, we're doing the exact opposite. If our normal step is here, we're going six inches further. We're gonna bend this back leg and drop this back shoulder. So again, it starts with the legs by gliding and it's sort of one motion. You think of stop short, get up, stride long, get under. That's, and it's not with your arm as much as with your legs. Extend that, bend this back leg, drop this back shoulder. And as you're coming through, drop, you're a little closer to your body here. Whereas rise ball, you want to come through, you still don't want to open early, you're not getting out here, but your arm is going to be out to the side a little bit more, right? So drop is in tight here, rise, you're going to come a little different path to the side, drop, you're following through to the opposite arm, shoulder area, whereas rise, you're coming up a little more shoulder to ear type area. Slight difference for everybody, you know, nobody's going to follow through to the exact same spot, but you should be coming a little more up on rise versus here on drop. Makes sense. I'm really, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not flicking my wrist a lot. Here, you made just a, a slight thinking of like that thumb. If you're coming through and your thumb is sort of pointing somewhat to home plate, and you just sort of turn it back a little bit towards third base, I'm not a big believer in like a massive twisting of the wrist. Uh, but, it, you know, you think of turning the doorknob, it's just a slight variation, but a lot of it is arm here coming through and getting under the ball. Uh, there is a little twist, but I wouldn't say dramatic. So with the way I was taught, it was real, real similar to your grip, but instead of like on top like that, it was beneath. And, yeah. And the, the 90 degree, like you said, and then a flick, but I found that like it doesn't, you know, it's iffy if it works. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that I you know, there are lots of different grips for lots of different pitches. Yeah, I mean, and I'm not going to say one is wrong. I'm probably going to tell you what I found success with. And what I found success with was you get on this side of the seam and a little bit here, you have something to pull on. If you're here, you're pushing on the seam with your finger. To me, that doesn't, I've never really seen it. It doesn't sound like the science would really work. Yeah, I'm much more about that natural tension that you create by pulling on the seam versus trying to push the seam here so I mean that's that's my take on it I definitely would encourage you to get more on that other side of the seam and to get your middle finger on a seam where you can pull on it so it's not all about this finger up I think it's actually more about your the middle finger and how you're able to pull on that seam this finger up allows you to do a little more of that twisting of the doorknob um, but yeah I've, I've never really heard of anybody successfully sort of using that finger to flick it for a rise ball again I could be proven wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying that this is what I had success with. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think it is a little bit of a. I don't know. I, some people think that a lot of your ball movement is in the motion of your wrist as you release. I think it's some, but I think more of it is in your grip and your leg position which then results in sort of your arm angle coming through and following through it's sort of your hand coming through the ball as opposed to your hand spinning and turning the ball that looks good yep yep that i mean that's how i would throw it uh, and i've seen lots of people be all over the horseshoe different directions uh, that that's what i found the most success with probably more because i had that seam to pull on on the bottom is why i like that so much Good. And again, I don't want to, you know, you guys are playing again here in a little bit. I don't want to have you guys throwing a ton, but, but work on that. You know, just work on that rise ball again. This is one that definitely could go in the lake the first couple of times you throw it, especially as you're over-exaggerating, you know, that stride and bending the backside to get underneath the ball. Um, but it's, you know, it's one of those things that you just got to work on, work on. 
what I'd encourage you not to do, and this is my own, again, my own personal preference, don't start taking 10 miles an hour off your pitch to start getting the spin and stuff. Like throw it hard. And if it's wild, then keep throwing it hard and you'll get more and more control, more and more spin. But at the end, if you sacrifice velocity for location and, uh, and spin, I don't think your ceiling is as high. If you are throwing everything hard, and as you're throwing it hard, you're now trying to get location, trying to get spin and bring everything together, I think your ceiling is much higher. So, good. Um, so those are my three pitches. I really didn't throw anything other than those three pitches other than maybe a rise ball that was lower in the zone. I didn't have cutters and sliders and curve balls. I just, I was a big believer on like the basic three. Now from there, I would work both sides of the plate. I would, you know, I would try and concentrate on good velocity at the knees. If I throw low rise, I'd make sure that it was low and on a corner. Um, so, I mean, there, there's obviously a lot more to it, but I would not get hung up on having 10 different pitches. Some guys have rise change, curve change, you know, four different changes. Some of the greatest that ever played had that. Darren Zach is probably the example. He had all, you know, rise, drop, and curve, and had probably two or three different speeds of every pitch, which was fantastic and worked really well for him. I wouldn't encourage you guys, especially where you're a little more starting out and maybe a little earlier in your your journey, like like focus on those three pitches and don't think about how do I get 10 pitches. Get two or three really good pitches and then you can build off of that. And if any of you get to Darren Zach level, I'll be more than happy for you, right? And, and that's that's kind of legendary, right? We're, we're focused on how do we get some of the basics in place, good velocity, good pitches, you know, three pitches that you can work and be amazing what you can do with three pitches so good i mean that's really all i had for you guys uh beyond that i'm open to questions if you guys want to work on stuff you know more than happy to but that's sort of what i wanted to walk you guys through not at all yeah yeah we'll grab a catcher after the next game um we'll be warming up i think that we play you guys next game and then after that, uh, you guys are done. We play at nine. Yeah, so that'll actually work out fine. I'll, I'll be free between the next two games. So yeah, I'm happy if we want to grab a catcher and you can do that. I am curious, it's inter interesting with the changeup. I've seen guys throw like the first five or six changeups with that grip and throw them fantastic and get it right away. I've seen other guys take months to, to start get comfortable with it. So don't give up on the, on the changeup, um, but that to me is one that I'd, really work on if I were you guys. The reason I like that as sort of a, a first changeup is it's off of the drop ball. Everything looks the same as a drop ball. Yep, yeah, but it has a downward spin. And if you're gonna have a good changeup, it's gonna be starting here, finishing here, or in some situations starting here, finishing in the dirt. Like thumb even further. Bring that thumb almost so it's touching your finger. Yep, but don't get it back in your palm. Keep it up on your, your fingertips. Yeah, you can, yep, I'd say, yep, more like that. You don't want to have your hand too straight. You probably will have a, not a cup of the wrist, but a little bit of your hand will be curved a little bit more. So just think, get the drop ball grip and then slide that thumb up. Um, you, you, people do have a tendency when they start to lose controls to slide that thumb back down. And I'll tell you, that's where you're going to start to get more velocity again. So you're going to have to, I would encourage you to keep that thumb up and out of the, out of the pitch for the most part and really work on trying to throw it hard, snap it off and getting over top of it. Um, and then you'll start to find that release point. I wouldn't have anybody standing close as you throw that for the first few times because because it is it is a challenging pitch to find the release point because it is a bit of an odd grip, but you'd be amazed at how quick you get comfortable with it. Was it a traffic cone? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. That would be wise. Good, good. That's really all ahead. But like I said, I'm around. Happy to walk through stuff with you guys after the next game. I'll be around tomorrow as well. I'm going to be here for sure. Do another one of these from 10 to noon. Um, so if you know of anybody else who wants to jump in, I know Alex. Well, I talked to him earlier. If he wants to jump in, let him know, or anybody else. Um, other than that, I'll be around and happy to answer questions. Perfect. All right. Thanks, guys. My name is John Guzdala. I'm from Bay City, Michigan, currently uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. 
I've been pitching fast pitch softball for uh, 22 years. Uh, this will be my sixth year um, with the ISC level um, at the Open. Uh, I came down to this tournament uh, with a team with three young pitchers on it that have been pitching for two or three years each. Um, one guy is in his second year right now, and uh, I think this, this tournament ended up being a great exposure uh, for a lot of the young players, getting them into a higher level uh, game and letting them see what they can really uh, grow into. So this tournament is a really high level ball with a lot of experienced players from all around uh, North America and some South Americans. And the ISC working with these youth uh, pitchers has been a great uh, initiative. And I think it's a really great game for anybody who's interested in trying to come in and pitch. Uh, the opportunities are out there to do some amazing things and travel the world. Uh, I am a current member of Team USA, 40-man roster. So pitching fast pitch softball has given me the opportunity to travel the world, see um, South America, see Europe, and meet people from all continents. And I, I think that this game is probably the best thing to happen to my life uh, other than my, my marriage. And so I highly encourage any and everyone that has the opportunity or has the desire to pursue uh, this game and give pitching a shot. Thanks for watching, and we hope you found this video helpful. Now, it's up to you to get this video in the hands of as many new pitchers as possible and breathe some new life into this game we all love.